Happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm Judy Engel, one of the pastors at Living Hope Community Church in Valparaiso, Indiana. I'm so glad you've joined me here for just a few minutes of reflection and prayer. So join me as we open with this prayer from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You've made them a little lower, the, lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. These last couple of days, Pastor Rich has been talking about fruit in our lives, good fruit and bad fruit, and staying connected to the vine so that we bear fruit. Well, today I want to continue in that train of thought by looking at another passage that talks about fruit in our lives. Some of you might have even guessed it by now. So let's take a look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23 in a familiar translation. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, sometimes hearing a familiar passage in another translation helps us gain new insight into the message it contains. So, let's listen to it again, but this time from the Passion Translation. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions, joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. When I read that translation, I'm struck by the perspective it lends to what it can mean to live out the fruit of the Spirit. In the past, I thought to myself, how on earth can I be all of these things all at the same time? That's a lot to ask of one person to be loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and in control, in the, in control of themselves all the time. But when I look at this other translation, I could see a different side to these instructions. Instead of being a list of things I needed to be all the time, they became actions I could take to live out the love that should be evident in my life if I'm a follower of Jesus. I began to ask questions like, what does patience have to do with love? Well, if I'm living out the mandate to love God and love others, patience will look a lot like, I don't know, me not being upset with the barista at Starbucks when they get my order wrong. Kindness considers that maybe they've just had several difficult customers in a row and maybe they're just plain having a bad day. And I can thank them for working so hard. Gentleness might sound like encouragement when I take a moment to recognize that someone just really isn't themselves and let them know that I'm there for them. In this light, demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit doesn't seem quite so hard, does it? When I am loving God and loving others, these other fruits just kind of flow out of that. And Paul, the author of Galatians, reminds us that there's no law in the Bible that we'll violate if we're living in this way. I don't know about you, but for me, it takes off a lot of the pressure to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in my life. When we love the way God loves, these other things just can't help but flow out from us. So those times you might find yourself being less than patient 
or kind or gentle or whatever, maybe you could take a moment and ask yourself, am I loving God and loving others right now? If you're anything like me, you'll likely answer, no, not really. So let's keep this in mind as we go about our day, as we come into contact with people in real life, on the telephone or even in social media. Love God, love people, and out of that will flow joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Pray with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. And now join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus so that we might share the good news with our neighbors. Amen.